Hello, everyone, and welcome to the celebration of the Civic 50 2022 honorees. It's wonderful to be here today. My name is Christine Shoppy, and I am the Chief Strategy and Growth Officer at Points of Light. On behalf of Points of Light, our board members, and the Civic 50 team and partners, let me be the first to congratulate this year's amazing honorees. Um, it is truly our privilege to spend this hour celebrating you. Um, as a title, um, as the title of the award indicates, today might seem all about the number 50, um, but as we celebrate these 50 amazing companies, I actually want you to think of two other numbers today. Um, I want you to think about the number 500 and then the number 12 million. Um, 500, because this represents the number of corporate citizenship professionals who work on behalf of the Civic 50 companies we are honoring today. For those team members who are on the webinar today, we want you to know that your leadership leadership is seen, it is valued, and we just want to congratulate you on the honor your company is receiving today and all the work you put in behind the scenes. And 12 million, because there are really 12 million employees represented by the Civic 50 companies we're honoring today. Employees who are participating in millions of hours of volunteerism, they're lending their voices and time to employee resource groups and so much more. Um, as we all know, companies are more than a brand name, a logo, a product, a service, and a stock price. Um, companies are made up of people, and what the Civic 50 um, truly celebrates is the power of people working within companies every day to make the world and communities a better place. So we're really excited to, to have everyone today and, and everyone that you represent. And so for 10 years, we have recognized the Civic 50. The framework that we utilize to determine this distinguished list is really one that is both timeless and timely. Um, there are really four elements to, this, to the Civic 50 framework. It's the strategic investments you are making in your community and across the community engagement and social impact. Um, it's how you're integrating community engagement and social impact throughout your business operations. It's how you're institutionalizing this work in your company's policies, systems, and operations. And of course, it's finally the deep and sustained impact of all of these combined efforts. Expectations for companies have never been greater than they are now, and it seems every day they grow stronger, but the companies that are represented on the Civic 50 that we're recognizing today are not just meeting these expectations, they are exceeding them, and they are really providing inspiration for all of us. Congratulations, everyone. Um, to continue the celebration, Points of Light would now like to share a message from our board chair, chair Neil Bush. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Neil Bush, Board Chair of Points of Light. I'm so excited to recognize you all in your work today, especially as we celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Civic 50. First, I want to thank Points of Light's team and our long-term partners, Farron Levy and B. Bacalandro, for their stewardship of this initiative. Over the last decade, the leadership roles that companies play in addressing global and local issues has only grown. It is always so meaningful when we get to celebrate and thank the businesses who are making impactful and lasting change in communities. Points of Light understands the critical role businesses play in investing in community, inspiring change, and making a difference. My dad, former President George H.W. Bush, believed in lifting up the work of those who are doing good in communities those points of light, and he would be so proud of all of you who are really living this mission through your work and values. Thank you for all you do to engage your employees, for your work with community organizations, and for all you do to improve the lives of citizens and communities where you are present. Congratulations to all the 2022 honorees. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for those words, Neil. Now I would like to welcome Points of Light's president and CEO, Natalie Paquin, to share her reflections on today's celebration. Natalie. Good afternoon. Hello, and thank you, Christine, and welcome to the celebration of Civic 50 uh, 2022. Congratulations to this year's honorees. All of you have had a deep commitment to your work while facing ongoing pandemic response, a war in Ukraine, continued commitment to equity and diversity, and defining new ways of work and more. 
Plus, we know that all of your employees want to have a voice and a choice. They have causes they care about too. And you've managed to navigate it all, continuing to do well while you're doing good. This is the 10th year of the Civic 50, and we are proud of how this field of CSR and social impact has grown. 10 years ago, there was a very different impression about its importance and a smaller scope of work. It was a box checked and a one-time day of service and sometimes a photo op. A decade later, in 2020, 92% of companies on the S&P 500 index published a CSR report compared to just 20% of those companies in 2011. That's progress. For those of you who have been on the Civic 50 list all 10 years, your commitment to measuring this engagement has contributed to growth in this field. Thank you. Points of Light most recent global uh, engagement research found that 82% of people globally said, yes, a company should do something related to a social issue. In our upcoming panel, and we hope you will be with us the entire hour, we will speak a little more deeply about the expectations of different types of consumers, but we know that more and more companies are listening to their stakeholders. And that is what they're saying. It's time to take a stand. As all of you have done, now we must work together to inspire more companies to do so. It's never been more critical. As you celebrate your achievements, we invite you to think about how you might leverage this group and create innovative partnerships that deepen your respective causes. Consider how you may leverage and share your learnings with your shareholders, your vendors, and others in your community to accelerate your work and your efforts. Together, we are changing our communities and creating a model of what it looks like to do business. Congratulations again on being an honoree of the Civic 50. And now I welcome Christine back to join me and celebrate the honorees. Wonderful, thank you so much, Natalie. We will now begin our recognition of the 2022 honorees. To help Natalie and I, I would like to invite Points of Light's longtime partners, Farron Levy, founder and CEO of True Impact, and B. Bacalandro, president of Vera Works, to join us on screen. The Civic 50 would not be possible without Farron and B's efforts, and we are grateful to have them with us today. So first of all, um, we're gonna share a full list and a congratulations to all of our honorees. So what, see, what you should see on your screen is a full list of these honorees. Um, but we will also be taking a moment to share each honoree's name to give each honoree that moment of recognition. And then of course, share special recognitions as a part of the Civic 50. So we're gonna take that moment now and I invite B to read out the first list of honorees. Congratulations to Adobe. Aflac, Altria Group, American International Group, Anthem, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana, Blue Cross, Blue Shield of Massachusetts, Caesars Entertainment, Capital One, Charles Schwab, City, Comcast, NBC Universal, and Comerica Bank. And excuse me, and uh, congratulations as well to ConAgra Brands, Cox Enterprises, CSAA Insurance Group, CVS Health, Deloitte, D Delta Airlines, Dow, DTE Energy, Entergy Corporation, Freeport MacMoran, General Mills, Hasbro, and Healthcare Service Corporation. Congratulations, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, John Deere, Kellogg's, Key Bank, KPMG, Liberty Mutual Insurance, Mass Mutual, Norton Life Lock, Pacific Life, Point 32 Health, Prudential, Regeneron, S&P Global. Congratulations. All right, Congrat congratulations, Steelcase, Subaru's, Subaru of America, Tata Consultancy Services, 
Tegna, The Hershey Company, United Health Group, Unum, UPS, Vertex Pharmaceuticals, Wells Fargo and Company, and Wynn Resorts. Congratulations. All right, on this next slide, we have a couple special recognitions. Um, the first is our sector leaders. Um, we have Deloitte for the, sec for the industrial sector, Dow for materials, DTE Energy for utilities, Key Bank for financials, Steelcase for consumer discretionary, Tata Consultancy Services for information technology, Tegna for telecommunications, the Hershey Company for Consumer Staples, and the United Health Group for Healthcare. We also have some very specific volunteer um, awards. We have the Volunteer Leader Award for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. This award really recognizes the company for having um, the leading volunteer culture and really embracing volunteerism as a priority for civic engagement. And we have the Strategic Volunteering Award. Um, we have that for Tata Consultancy Services, this award recognizes the company for their strategic efforts in driving impact and engaging employees through pro bono and skills-based volunteer initiatives. Congratulations. And finally, as you've heard before, this is actually the Civic 50's 10th year and we have actually had several companies make the list all 10 years and we really wanna take a moment to celebrate those companies. That would be Altria Group, Capital One, City, Freeport McMoran, Hasbro, the Hershey Company, and United Health Group. Thank you so much and congratulations. Wonderful. And as you can see here, a final look at all 50 of these uh, wonderful companies and please help me celebrate them. All 50 have done incredible work in, in just excelling at corporate citizenship and, and social impact. And we're grateful for the work they're doing for the world. All right. So later this month, we will actually be sharing the full report of aggregated data and insights about the Civic 50, but we would like to actually preview some of these data points and insights today, and you'll see them on your screen here, and I'll briefly walk through them. So number one, in aggregate, companies represented by the Civic 50 contributed a total of $2 billion in cash and about $1.8 billion in in-kind to societal causes. Um, as shared in the details on this slide, these figures are actually a little bit less than 2021. However, contributions as a percentage of revenue actually went up slightly. Um, I think as we all are feeling it right now, our economy is facing a little bit of headwinds related to inflation and other disruptors. So we will continue to really pay attention and to monitor the impact of this on investment and societal issues and, and cause areas. Secondly, um, we saw employees engage in 5.8 million hours of external volunteering across our Civic 50 companies. On average, about 22% of employees participated in external volunteer activities. What is also really encouraging is that we are continuing to see high levels of internal volunteering with 48% of employees participating in activities like employee resource groups, green teams, and more. And um, we really expect this number to not only hold strong um, as we see millennials take more critical mass in the workforce, particularly in leadership positions, but also as Gen Z continues to enter the workforce, we're going to see that can really internal volunteerism and really sharing their voice grow. We also saw the Civic 50 evolve their community involvement in new directions with twice as many honorees prioritizing civil and human rights as a cause area. It's really wonderful to be able to share on the Thursday before Juneteenth that 100% offer racial justice training to employees and 90% of Civic 50 companies have CEOs who publicly promoted racial justice. Finally, 100% of the Civic 50 companies reported significant efforts in integrating their community engagement into business functions. Um, companies have definitely now realized that community, community engagement strategy is business strategy, it is employee recruitment and retention strategy, it is marketing, it is product, it is, it is so much more. These strategies are all integrated and really community engagement is, is, a, is a key part of all of it. So as I said earlier, we will be dropping the full report later this month. We encourage you to download it, read it, share it within your networks. Um, and again, congratulations to everyone. With that, I would actually like to welcome back Natalie and as well as our panelists, Carol Cohn and Derek Feldman, who will engage in a conversation about where the next decade of corporate citizenship may be headed. With that, welcome back, Natalie, and welcome, Derek and Carol. Thank you, Christine, and thank you to our longtime partners, Farron Levy and V. Bacalandro. We could not do this work without your leadership, your stewardship, and your partnership. 
Uh, and so now it is my pleasure to welcome two of my great friends here uh, in this business, Carol Cohn and Derek Feldman. I have to say personally, I've had the opportunity to, to meet with them, work with them over the past almost five years. And um, you all are great leaders in this space and you inspire us all. Uh, Carol, if you would uh, allow me just to do a little introduction, uh, just for those of you who are meeting you for the first time. Uh, Carol Cohn is founder of Carol Cohn On Purpose. She is internationally recognized for her work on social purpose and CSR. Her goal is to educate, inspire, and accelerate social purpose programs. She brings big ideas to clients, and we have experienced that to build their businesses and social impact and runs the Purpose 360 podcast. Welcome, Carol. Well, thank you, Natalie. It's a pleasure to be here. Congratulations. It's a wonderful day. Thank you. And then to my colleague and friend, uh, Derek Feldman. Derek is Managing Director of Influence SG, a social issue campaign and movement research and advisory firm as well as Managing Director of the Ad Council Research Institute and Ad Ed Council Edge. He is a leading researcher in and advisor on global issues uh, and movements, and he has also, also authored three books. And Derek has been the leader with Points of Light on the body of research that we have conducted over the past three years. Thank you and welcome, Derek. Absolutely. Thanks, Natalie, for having me. What a great day. Great. Derek, so I know our um, colleagues are excited to hear from you and Carol, so let's just dig in. Let's start in. So you've worked with uh, um, other research. You've worked with us on other research, and you also know what people are expecting, that they're expecting more from companies. How are consumers reacting when they hear the news about companies doing good, and how can companies continue to share their work? Sure. So... It's interesting because uh, we have seen so many studies around values and purpose and what the consumer sort of a general public is interested in seeing from companies. And while we see some of that work uh, happen out there, we see some great things perceptionally, we also don't necessarily see a follow through with action. I mean, I think we can all say some of us have seen research where people say one thing and then behave a different way. And this is some of that. We still see a lot of that. I mean, in our world, we kind of notice three types of consumers out there in the general public. We have the activist consumer who's instigating and pressuring companies to be better, you know, live out their values, determine their purpose, get active and involved from there. We also have what we sort of have that middle section, which is the, what I would say, the conscious consumer but is often sort of tied into the challenges of everyday life, which includes things like economic conditions and all of the things that we all are dealing with, COVID, health, family, jobs, employment, just dealing with all of those, but desire to do good, desire to see companies achieve more in this space as well, but are often challenged with everyday life. And then we see sort of our more economic style consumers who you know, obviously are having to deal with so many other challenges and issues that they may not be able to look at values and purpose in that kind of way. What that means is the consumer is not one consumer in general, and not every generation expects the same thing per se. And when we work with brands and anytime we're working on social issue campaigns or integrations with products and so forth, we always kind of come down to one conversation, which is, each of these three different types of consumers has different needs and expectations. But what is the value? What's the thread line between all of that? And sometimes that's not so coherent, uh, quite honestly. Sometimes we have our PR and comms team working to address what activist consumers want. Sometimes our brand teams are working with that middle category. And sometimes the ones that economic and looking at things very differently are never addressed in general. So a, what I call a corporate social mindset requires us to look across all of our consumer bases and understand that values and proposition that we need to try to address with some of these issues and be cognizant that we do have different expectations across our consumer bases. Well, um, thank you for that. I think uh, you, you're giving us some vocabulary to work with and uh, for us to understand that consumers are not a monolithic group. 
uh, that you actually have to disaggregate them and understand their motives and uh, what's important to the to them, so and what their expectations are from um, from companies. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, Carol would love to have you build on um, on uh, Derek's uh, remarks, but also you, Carol, have led some really phenomenal brand campaigns. Can you share a little bit more about the type of leadership it takes and the commitment it it takes to make it effective? Uh, sure. Um... I, I love that um, Derek talked about consumers. I would say that I've spent 20 years looking at employees as consumers. And we just fielded last week and, uh, and launched Purpose Under Pressure, which is, I'm very proud to say, my 31st piece of research since 1993, because we've always wanted to understand all stakeholders. And we wanted to say, what are employees expecting in a post-COVID world, especially in a world that's hybrid? And you know, will they return to work? What's going to keep them glued to the company? And not surprising, meaning is more important than ever before, which means the work of the Civic 50, the work of Points of Light, as you said, and as Christine said over the last 10 years, is becoming absolutely strategic. So we also um, looked in our research, what are CEOs doing? What kind of leadership do they need to express? And the CEOs in the C-suite said, yes, if we lean into our purpose more, we'll be more successful. But here's the schism that maybe not the Civic 50, but others are experiencing. Marketing, sales, and strategy are not as committed at all to living and breathing and activating the company's purpose. And when that happens, you're losing a tremendous amount of impact. Um, so that's really important from our research. I'd also like to say that, so what is leadership like? The leadership needs to be clear, it needs to be, um, it needs to inspire others. And I, I have to shout out my friends at TCS, I hope you don't mind. I love Balaji Ganapate, you know, he, he um, created the term, Purpose is a new technology, and I love it. And TCS has found that collaboration, you know, it's not just when they bring new employees in. And for all of those out there, they added 200,000 employees, new employees during the pandemic. And that's a lot to add to their total 600,000. So that they are working with them from the very first day, three months, they're really onboarding them in terms of what are the values of TCS? How are they expressed? And I also like the fact that they are collaborating in their Go IT program, for example, they're collaborating with some of their customers. And one of them, KeyBank, another Civic 50 winner, right, honoree, um, they're working together to show underserved and young women true careers in STEM education. And so it's integration, it's collaboration, it's patience, and it's also being strategic. Thank, thank you. Uh, I could, uh, while I can't see, I could feel some heads nodding when you shared that, you know, sometimes marketing, sales, and strategy, they're not allow, uh, aligned when they are actually doing their jobs to push the company's products and services on purpose, um, per se, and that, um, and that purpose is, um, uh, is strategic and that we really have to think about purpose being strategic. And I, I do think that uh, with Derek's original comments about the different types of employees and the different types of customers you have, um, when we are working within our various um, departments, those departments are really focused on that and not necessarily aligned. And so thank you for on, uh, on the purpose aspect of our work. So thank you for, for lifting that up. Uh, Derek, I have a, another question for you. And um, at the end, if we have a little time, we will um, entertain a couple of um, questions from, um, from those who are joining us. But Derek, for almost every um, issue, you've seen both sides of an argument, how companies can take a strong action when they know that there's a percentage of, um, how, how can, sorry, how can companies take a strong action when they know that there are a percentage of people who do not agree with them. And then Carol, if you would just go on mute while um, while Derek is responding. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, this is an interesting one, uh, Natalie, because over the last couple of years, 
we have had to do a lot of assessments for companies to understand where their consumers lie on these issues. And it's interesting because, you know, I have one company brand that I work with globally that you know, 80% of their com consumers were, were in alignment with the values position that they wanted to publicly talk about, which left 20%. Right. And the conversation in that moment is honestly when we test our courage and our values and our purpose, because it's that dialogue where you decide as leadership, as a company, our various stakeholders from what Carol was talking about with employees to our partners and everybody else to say, while we know that we are obviously more in the right, maybe even the right side of history on this issue in top there there will be people that, that don't align with us. And I think this is an important opportunity rather than a threat. And in that moment, and in lots of the dialogue that we'll have with companies and brand teams around that is, what do we do to help the 20% understand and be more informed? It's not, we are just gonna take a position to help the rest of our consumers. What can we do as a company to inform? How do we help our employees who might be the first face and touch point of our brand directly with consumers have better dialogue around the reasons that we might do this and what is really happening? And it is different for every company. I, I have worked with companies where it was 90-10 and they still said we couldn't do it, you know, because of many different things related to timing related to moments and other things happening within the company, which I, I totally under, can, can understand at that time. But here's what we have to realize as companies, and many obviously here know this, which is we have an established values or, or we're, we have, we're in the process of establishing maybe what our purpose is and so forth, is the times in which that is under pressure, which is the times in which the community around us, the consumers that we have, our employees are asking us to live up and go beyond is really the time that those are tested. And the decisions and the conversations had internally should not just be kept internally, but should be transparently communicated out about how and why these decisions are done. It's not an easy one, but obviously it's always said, leading with values and purpose can really help you get there in general. But I ask our companies and brands a lot is let's not just decide to go forward, but what do we do with those who may not understand and who are uninformed and or what can we do as a company to be the place that nudges them to learn more about why this is necessary? Points of Light is so fortunate to have uh, colleagues and friends like uh, like you, Derek and Carol. I feel like this is a master class on on purpose and how to get it right. And your your um, points, which is you know, let's not look at the opportunity to take a position. Let's not look at that as a threat, but let's look at it as an opportunity. And um, let's also, when we have people who don't agree with us, some of our employees and stakeholders, let's seize the moment to really help um, them understand and become more informed of why a company is taking a particular position. And then also to be uh, transparent about the how and the why of the decision. So thank you so much. Yes, it's just Love it, <laughs> just love it. Um, so uh, Carol, I have um, you know one question and this will go to both you and, um, and Derek. And Derek, I think you touched on it a little bit but we'll ask Carol to, uh, to lean in here. You know, a part of our work was creating the, the civic circle framework which is a way of engaging. And just like uh, the United Nations gave the world, the SDGs, a framework to look at um, problems, we've helped um, create uh, a framework for civic engagement. And both Carol, you and Derek were instrumental in helping us develop that framework. So thank you. Um, one element um, on the civic engagement uh, framework is uh, our points of light civic circle is about listening and learning and why it is so critical um, as uh, really a, a, a basic and the first place to start for an important place to start um, before and while you're doing civic engagement. Can you speak a little bit about um, 
you know, with crisis after crisis, how -hmm. companies can continue to listen, learn, and respond um, when they are sticking to their, their, um, their positions on corporate uh, purpose. Carol, can you um, share a little bit more? And then Derek, if you'd like to expand a bit on what you just um, offered, that'd be great. Um, I think that when companies are determining their values, and a lot of companies today are revisiting their values. And again, listening is absolutely key. If you embed across the organization, top down, bottom up, across, especially from the manufacturing floor, a lot of listening and engagement because your values must be authentic. They're going to be your prism and your lens to decide where to act and where to have activism and not. That's one. Two, ERGs. There are more and more and more ERGs being created in companies. And companies, yes, they give their colleagues a chance to chat and to be with each other, but they should listen to them. And they are an incredibly valuable resource to help make decisions that may not be 100% embraced by others. So I think that's two areas. I think that listening, we hear so much today from our clients, as well as on my podcast, my list, my guests on Purpose 360 podcast, where we listen to perhaps those who are NGOs that are against us. And I had Ben and Jerry's um, on the show and they went out to the naysayers, the ones that didn't like what they were doing and they listened and they conversed and they developed relationships. So if indeed an issue came up over time, they could at least provide commentary from others, not just, oh, we're the great guys, but they've listened and they've helped us advance our knowledge. And so I think it's really, really important not to just go like the wind, but to listen. It's a valuable, valuable, valuable attribute. Thank you. Derek, any more to add? Yeah, I, I would say on the consumer side, uh, we spend a lot of time trying to understand the consumer's holistic view. Uh, it's interesting because as we look at our consumers, whatever brand that we have, we look at it from the sense of asking singular style questions. You know, what do you think about this issue? What do you think about us as a company? How do you associate us? All these other things. And I often talk to, to sort of the internal research market consumer insights team and talk about let's understand a couple key things that are affecting many of us, which is our economic conditions and our challenges, our, our, our issues related to maybe the news and the things that we gather. We have to really understand the holistic view as to why, you know, or what uh, the person is thinking related to the company. And it doesn't just think, it doesn't just happen in terms of, well, I bought this or I like them and it's an identity kind of piece with the brand. It goes way beyond that. And so brand teams or marketing teams that I'll work with, we often talk about, let's get a fuller understanding about how people are looking at these issues and understand not just the typical things we do in research, like whether education um, or household income comes into it, but rather what are their values? What, and, and those things change and shift where everybody is. You know, and, and I think what's even more challenging around this, and I often talk about the, the ideal state is to always think about people have this, again, now to your point, this homogeneous, this sort of like singular area, this is our consumer, and that's really difficult. I mean, each one of us identifies with many different things. And so we must do a really good job of listening and learning to understand why our consumers might have those expectations and where they're coming from, their own knowledge and attitudes and biases and their own behaviors that contribute to helping us make the right decisions as well. So we gotta take those what we call knowledge attitudes and behaviors and we gotta listen and learn to understand those fully. Okay. Uh, one last question uh, for, for both of you, and uh, because I know personally you're both really big thinkers, let's talk about the future. We have been at this at points of light 
uh, recognizing companies for over 10 years for their civic engagement and corporate citizenship. And we say, again, congratulations to those companies who have been here uh, from the beginning. Your leadership has really helped um, evolve uh, our country and the world in this in this space. But Carol, let's, let's ask you, um, what do you envision over the next 10 years uh, for CSR and ESG and for the leaders who are joining us today? What, what do you envision this space to be? Well, that's a small question. It's a large question. Um, first of all, I trust there's going to be a total pivot on communications of what good we are doing. We are, so many of our clients are saying, I'm so frustrated we can't get our story out. You have an army your employees who have all their social channels and some companies allow their employees to be very, very fluid and to, to take pictures and to talk about things and some don't. I would strongly suggest that is your primary communications channel. And actually I asked that question to Alan Murray, who's the CEO of Fortune Media, who just came out with a great book, Tomorrow's Capitalist. And I asked the exact same question and he said, it's through your employees. It's through your not-for-profits you're working with. So there's a shift there. They're not an afterthought. They are the primary means of communication. That's number one. Number two, there's only 44 women leading Fortune 500 companies. And so because empathy, empathy and resilience and flexibility um, and collaboration are so critical for the challenges that we don't even know we're going to have tomorrow, that I trust and hope and forecast that you will have hundreds of women, not 44, leading Fortune 500 companies. So that's another thing I will see into the future. And then every company's social impact or its and its environmental impact, it will be embedded across the board, integrated throughout everything they do from their employees and their EVP, their employee value proposition, to their innovation. We're seeing tremendous innovations. You know, unleash your innovation team with your social purpose. Uh, it's just amazing. As well as your communities, your supply chain, that in the future, this is gonna be living and breathing how companies, how they are, how they integrate, and how they just express themselves. It's very, very exciting. And it's why I continue to be so passionate about the work. Well, that, that is a very bright uh, future. Um, thank you. Uh, the fact that companies will need more, they will need leaders and leadership with empathy, flexibility, and resilience. And your prediction is that uh, we will have hundreds of uh, women leading these uh, top companies and top brands. So thank you. And marrying innovation with, um, with, with, purpose and with what we're doing. So thank you. Derek, what about you? Uh, you work with so much research. Uh, I'm sure you have many uh, insights and projections. What do you see uh, for the future for all of us in this space? Yeah, I, I think that companies are going to figure out their voice appropriately on social issues, honestly. I think the last several years and now and this year and, and going forward, Many company leaders have been figuring out what kind of voice they want to have. And I always ask companies, you know, when we're talking about social issues publicly, you have to decide, or do we need to be the leading voice? Most often not, you know, but how can we support others who are leading voices? What's the kind of voice and tone we want to have with our issues? And I think this is an interesting time as some have maybe maybe not have had success with certain social issues that they've decided to publicly support and, and to come out with. I think the second thing I would say is our consumers are obviously always getting smarter and smarter, and that's a lot to do with our marketers and, and others who are engaging them in different kinds of conversations around the brand. Uh, yeah, I do believe, you know, social issues and values and, and so forth will, will continue to be a part of that dialogue. Um, but I also think that companies will start to look at and, and addressing, okay, how, does, how more is this consumer impacted broadly around our product? rather than just in the way it's used in that moment and so on. Where does our brand show up? What does that look like? Um, and I think that those refinements to our values and purpose will start to look at it from a brand identity, as well as not only just corporate values and purpose that we start to brew a little bit further, 
sort of corporate consumer engagement style efforts that we that we see so successful in some companies. Last thing, I, I would sort of say two, just because you can't leave it out three, right? They always say three things. Um, but I would say that in the future, I think not only will we figure out sort of the impact way that we feel successful, not only with the Civic 50, but in other ways that we measure impact, but um, we'll also be looking at it in terms of what, what value do we want to add to issues? And I think that companies will, will get even stronger and better at the way they approach issues and say, this is the ecosystem and this is the value that we bring and the value we add and clearly articulate that. Because sometimes in our story, kind of almost to Carol's point, it can get lost in there. While we have these individuals that can help us, we got to narrow in that narrative a little bit further to help us understand that we are adding value. Um, and that's always the biggest question about everything going forward, which is what value do we add on these topics and issues in the community? Well, thank you. Thank you both. Uh, and um, I, I have my notes, voice, impact, and value. And uh, yes, empathy, flexibility, resilience. The future is indeed uh, quite bright. I think we had asked if there were any questions uh, from our audience to please uh, uh, feel free to put them in the uh, Q&A. We have not received any questions, so I will take that as you all have done a wonderful job in really um, covering uh, the key issues that people want to hear about. Uh, I would say thank you again for, um, for joining us, for being our partners. Uh, thank you to B. Bacalandro and Farron Levy. Congratulations to all of our Civic 50 2022 20, honorees. And, uh, and thank you for those who have been uh, on our list for, 20, for 10 years and also to the sector leads. And so with that, I will turn it back over to my colleague, Christine Shoppy. Wonderful. Thank you, Natalie, Carol, and Derek for that wonderful conversation. Um, as we close out today, I want to share two items. Um, the first is that many of you may or may not know that the Civic 50 is also a regional initiative and is actually currently in three markets. Um, and those are uh, Colorado, the, um, the greater Philadelphia area, and Orange County. And so just really a part of a network of, of Civic 50. And what I'll say is the Philadelphia Foundation is our partner in, um, for the Civic 50 Greater Philadelphia. And we'll be announcing their honorees on June 23rd, so next week. Um, One OC, which is a Points of Light Network member, leads the Civic 50 Orange County. And applications are currently open through July 31st for that um, honor. And then finally, CSR Solutions of Colorado leads the Civic 50 Colorado and applications are open until August 15th. Um, you can look for the links in the chat. My colleagues will be posting it there. Finally, I hope we will see many of you at the Points of Light Conference in July. It is at Walt Disney World. So who would wanna miss out in Orlando? We are really excited about the significant learning and network opportunities that are gonna be centered around business. So if you are not registered, um, you can learn more at the link that is also going to be included in the chat. And we hope to see many of you there in person um, for what will be a really exciting learning and networking experience. Um, with that, we will conclude today's webinar. I do wanna say a final thank you to Derek and Carol for joining us today. Again, to Farron and B for their long-term uh, just programmatic partnership. And finally, a very special thank you to Points of Light's Director of Business Innovation, Jeff Ader, who is really the internal leader and champion of this program at Points of Light. Grateful for you, Jeff. Again, congratulations to all the honorees and thank you to everyone for joining today's webinar. Congratulations.